Hey guys, I want to talk to you today about the sponsor for this show, which is Aura. And I want to let you know that I'm a reporter in my day job, and I use the internet every single day to find people, many people who would rather not be found. And you would be literally shocked if you Googled your own name, uh, you know, maybe using your middle name as well to filter out some results, but you would be shocked of how much of your personal information is already readily accessible online. Your phone number, your home address, your email address. I, there is a ton of information out there if you search for it. And the reason why is because there are data brokers out there who profit by selling your information to robocallers, uh, telemarketers, spammers, people like that who want to learn more about you. And that's why I want to tell you about today's sponsor, Aura. Aura identifies who those data brokers are that are exposing your personal information, and they automatically submit opt-out requests on your behalf. They'll even opt you out of junk mail and telemarketing lists. So I'd like you guys to use our link. It's Aura.com, A-U-R-A.com slash TeamHouse to try two weeks and see how many data brokers are sharing your information. Uh, the link is also down in the description, and there's a QR code that you can scan if you like. Um, so please check them out. You'll get two weeks for free. Again, I think you would be totally shocked to find out how much of your personal information is already out there. So go ahead, do a Google search on your own and see what's out there. And if you don't like how much of your personal information is out there, I highly suggest you check out Aura.com slash TeamHouse to try it for two weeks free and see if they can help get your information private again. That's Aura.com slash TeamHouse to get two weeks for free. The Team House with your hosts, Jack Murphy and David Park. That was, you know, the end of 2009, we're going to 2010. Um, I, I move into this position, you know, as a, a mid-level leader there. And then, um, you know, the fall of 2010 um, rolls around and, you know, it, when you get into one of these leadership positions, you generally get thought of as part of the committee that sort of helps to make decisions about things, or at least brought in and talked about um, things that, that transpire. And, and um, the HVT1 team, High Value Target 1, the Bin Laden team, had been you know doing their thing that they've been doing for, for years at that point and running out tons of leads. And they had found a historical leadership facilitator who we now know as Abu Ahmed al Kuwaiti, they had located him in Peshawar, Pakistan, using some pretty sophisticated um, SIGINT and surveillance means, and they had a ent an entity followed him back to a an amazing house in Abbottabad, Pakistan, an amazing by by standards in Abbottabad, uh, and the. I, I don't know if, the, again, this is one of those stories I'm not 100% uh, is true because I didn't hear it firsthand, but some version of that went when the, the individual who was one of the individuals that followed um, AK, as we called him, to this house, got to the house and said something along the lines of like, oh shit, knowing at that point once he saw the house, like, this is something. Came back and of course that started to make its way whispering around the halls of the APEC department that... Um, Abu Ahmed al Kuwaiti had been uh, discovered doing some pretty amazing phone OPSEC security, phone security. He was using one phone in Peshawar, shutting it off, and then um, he had a, a local phone that he was using in Abbottabad for you know, the persona that he had adopted in Abbottabad and his family had adopted. Uh, and he was doing a pretty good job. This was just a, a hard sleuthing, um, targeting effort, targeting an operational effort to find that he was communicating when he was in Peshawar, he made the smallest of small slip-ups in saying something to the effect of, um, over over the phone, you know, I'm still working for the same guys I used to work for. Uh, and then and these folks who knew at that point Abu Ahmed Kuwaiti's story were like, okay, but well, this is something here. And then when he showed up back at the house, you know, in, in, in the fall of 2010, I think everybody was kind of like, okay, this is definitely something. Uh, and at that point, you know, a, a very small group of people were brought into that and and they started thinking about okay how are we gonna how are we gonna figure this out what are we gonna do and, and what resources do we need they went to the president pretty quickly thereafter um, and President Obama um, to his credit 
It was like you unlimited resources. Um, you have no budget. There's no ceiling on this. Um, get to it. We are very lucky. America is very lucky that the director at the time was a guy by the name of Leon Panetta, Uncle Leon, as many of us uh, think of him, or I do, my, my favorite director. Um, just a straight talking, mostly straight shooter. And when he wasn't a straight shooter, it's because he was doing something crafty most of the time that he didn't want everybody to know about. Um, he's a little bit like Columbo. I kind of think of him. We're like, one more thing. Uh, I know all your secrets. <laughs> um, and so I loved him, but I think he was one, he had a very good relationship with Obama. So like Obama really trusted him, but then he was also willing to push the envelope on things that others might've been, uh, less risky toward. Um, and so, yeah, we, we move forward. Uh, I, I'm doing nothing at this point, but like sneaking into the meetings, like anytime I like look on the schedule and see, cause it's hard to kick out, um, a branch chief or, uh, I guess an active branch chief at that time from these meetings, right? It's like, well, this is going to be awkward if we ask Aaron to leave, but he's not <laughs> actually invited. It's no joke. Like I did this throughout my career where I'd be like, I'm just going to show up right. and see if they <laughs> kick me out. Um, so I was regularly like sitting in the back row of these meetings as we're running up to it. And then finally it becomes pretty apparent that, you know, there's a good chance. It, anybody who says that they knew this was bin Laden when those helicopters launched is absolutely lying. There was nobody knew. There was no, nobody knew. The Pakistanis didn't know um, that we in the Pak Afghan department didn't know. The president certainly didn't know. It, it what, was not what, known. What were what were the indicators though? Because I mean, some of the accounts, like even President Obama's account in his memoir. I mean, I, when he says he had to make the call, he's like, "So at the end of the day, it's a flip of the coin, right?" That's exactly what he said. It's fifty fifty. He said, "Stop telling me numbers. Stop telling me percentages. You're making up numbers. This is a fifty fifty call." He did. What, he said what, that. What, what were it, from from the intelligence perspective? I mean, what were the indicators of like? Maybe he's here. Um, so, yeah, I think uh, between um, Obama, Panetta, and McRaven, I think they've done a good job of articulating, you know, what, what was being looked at, right? So there, there was never a clear indicator that it was bin Laden. Like, there were features of what they were seeing, you know, and I'm going to butcher this, and, and any of my friends, or maybe they're not friends now that I'm um, talking about this publicly, we'll find out later. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll be glad to correct me in some facet here, but um, you know, the, the number, the family numbers um, seem to line up pretty well, which was always a pretty good um, way to know this. You know, I had a pretty specific uh, number of uh, family members that were probably with them. At, Excuse me. You. Thank um, you. And that matched up. Um, you know, there was all kinds of trigonometry going on to determine, you know, if, if the person pacing around the compound was, six two or six three or however tall um, bin Laden was or if he was even that tall if this was an exaggerated number uh, for his height um but again you know never did that guy look up and you know give a full face review um and so at this point it was just the features that really i think made it um clear that this was going to be something that w was going to go um were all the ones that are well known now like the, the third floor having no windows was just super suspicious that that it had a third floor at all was somewhat suspicious, but that the third floor was windowless. Um, you know, s super interesting clues that on their own don't really mean much, but start to become interesting when you're just trying to add this up. Like, you know, a couple of the satellites were pointed towards Arab television, Arabic speaking television stations, right? Rather than Pashto or Urdu. Um, you know, the, the, the stories about kicking, you know, the neighbor kids kicking the soccer ball over the fence and not getting the soccer ball back, um, you know, because they were just so security oriented behind there. Um, you know, there's, there's a bunch of stories out there that are just not true about, you know, surveillance teams and, you know, um, safe houses and all kinds of other things that I think have just sort of grown up um, as myth over time. Like they were not taking the risk to put something too close to that and spooking, um, you know, whoever was there. But again, I remember I was excited. I, I, I'm bad. Like, I, I don't learn lessons very well. I'm like, it's Bin Laden. Like, this is it. Let's do it. This is Bin Laden. Let's just get it over with. But I, the, the, the HVT1 team, they were divided. Or I don't know if evenly divided, but there were at least a number of them. They're like, no, they've been tricked too many times mm -hmm. um, by Intel, right? Well, what and about the, like, the, story, the story about the doctor? Mm. So... That was the longest pause I, in U.S. intelligence history. Uh, yeah, so I am going to, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be in uh, a bit of a, I'm gonna be a bit of an, uh, I don't obtuse. know what the, you guys can enter. What, what is it? Obtuse. Yeah, I, I don't know what it was. I was gonna be go a little harsher um, than that. Okay. I don't know where this one stands. Okay. Um, and um, 
I do not want to give any ammunition. I, I'm I'm happy to um, go kind of crazy with um, some of the stories and stuff like that, but I think there's there's actually a hazard there, um, uh, and and I don't want to give any ammunition one way or another to to something that could cause um, someone who I think truly might still be in harm's way, and I don't know this story well enough to know. Um, so yeah, I, I should probably wave off um, okay. of that one. Um, but so but the, so, the so the team is divided though about whether or not he's really there, right? Yeah. So, and this was fascinating, right? Because like, they're just like, they've been, they've been duped. Um, they've been tricked and they really want facts. Right. And so at this point it was like, figure it out, use money, use resources, use creativity. Um, this is when I got to see some of the coolest stuff, um, you know, sort of come out of the agency things that I'm de I definitely should not repeat here because it's still very valid, um, uh, techniques. But like when I was like, what was I going to see when I got into the agency, you know, and I'm thinking in 1998 or, you know, uh, September 11th in college or those guys getting killed in Tucker Gar. And I'm like, I'm really going to do this. Like, this is what I was expecting to do. And finally I'm there and I'm doing it from Langley. Um, but there wasn't really anybody doing it in Abbottabad. Um, so it wasn't like you could get physically up against this. Um, and so then therefore, in my opinion, doing it at headquarters was the coolest place to do it because you had access to all what that was happening. And I got to watch how these decisions were made, which for me as a student, sort of the leadership decisions, this was a fascinating time. Um, and so, yeah, you have this team, who's debating it. And you're right. You just talked about, you know, Obama saying it's not 50, 50 and the NCTC is like been asked to like review it from a red cell perspective. And that's where the percentages came out of. And they're like, we think it's 68%. I think it's 72. And, and yeah, Obama was like, stop making up numbers. Um, <laughs> if you don't know, you don't know. Um, and so people who think like he ended up was like, uh, this is, you know, people like, Oh, that was an easy call. Everybody would have sent the helicopters up in line. Absolutely not true. Like if it had been Zawahiri and they had launched that raid, like they, that the political reverberations for that, repercussions for that, would have been extraordinary because nobody would have um, uh, ordered that raid force in for Zawahiri. People couldn't even pronounce his name. They still don't know. They didn't know when he when he died. However many months ago is now he died in Kabul. Like that was a non incident, right? And it would have been there too. Like you sent an entire raid force across the border in Pakistan without their permission to get the number two of Al Qaeda. That would have been unacceptable. Right. You invaded uh, a foreign country. You did without telling them to yeah. get the number two. Right. And we had killed number three at that time like eleven times. Yeah. Um, right. Right. Um, I don't think people would have gone for it. And that was discussed. Like, what will happen if we go in and it's not him? And the idea was that th this is going to be a bad day uh, right. for American policy. Right. Um, and so anybody who thinks that, that that wasn't a call that was that took some time, um, what, wasn't consuming what was happening at that time. Right. Um, and usually I think they think, oh, they knew it was him. They did. They, nobody knew. They did not. So I, I have a story. Um, the, the day, I think it was a Friday. So I got very lucky. Um, as we got closer to the raid, um, I I, uh, I went to the head of the Pack Afghan Department, and people remember me as getting selected to do this job, and I don't usually disabuse them of that. But when I actually have to tell it myself, I have to tell people what actually happened. I went in, and I said, "Hey, Chief, um, I want to roll. I want to do something uh, in this. I don't want to keep sneaking into the meetings. Can you give me a job? Um, I don't care what it is. I'll take notes." Um, and he said, "I'll do you one better. Um, you're from here on out, go give your, your duties, um, to one of your team and you're going to be my executive assistant, um, until we get to the end of this thing. And I was like, yes. So I, I asked for that and I was given that job. Um, and that's why I, I coach people like, you're not going to get to do something cool unless you ask to do it. But sometimes you'll get called to do it. But most of the time, if you want to do it, just go ask. And if you're good enough to do it, or in this case, if you're just, they know you're going to show up anyway, like I was, they might as well right. give you some work to do. <laughs> you may as well. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you're already here. <laughs> right. Uh, I, I mean, I, I love the way you talk about this in such like a casual manner, because for people who are kind of on, on the inside, it's a job. And it's true, it becomes a job, right? But I mean, this was like, there was intense secrecy around this. Like, this was a big fucking deal as what was, what was Biden who said that was <laughs> after the fact, wasn't yeah. it? It was, um, I mean, I think, I don't remember what the exact number was, but it was the most, it, it, it stands up as one of the most secret things um, in the U.S. government history. I think the, the head of um, NSA's counterterrorism said it was the most secret thing that he was ever part of um, in his career. And coming from NSA, that's that's saying something. Yeah. Um, and I, I don't remember the numbers were, but like at one point it was, it was a, it was a buy list um, redon. And I think it was like 78 or something like that um, across, up until a point across the government, I think. Um, now, of course, they read people in, in in executive positions that they didn't put on the list. That always happens. Um, but for instance, like the ambassador to Pakistan didn't know till the raid day. Um, and um, that's a pretty big deal. And, um, uh, you, you mentioned uh, how you guys couldn't really even get on the same sheet of music about how to conduct the raid. I was wondering if you could speak a little bit to the different options that were looked at in the run up to yeah. this. Yeah, absolutely right. Um, I mean, you know, uh, 
you guys have met some of the uh, agency's paramilitary guys uh, before. Uh, and when there was an option for them to potentially go and do this, of course, they were like, yes, um, we are going to do this thing. That's not what the uh, CIA's paramilitary department uh, is really designed to do. That there can be some people going to argue with me about this too. <laughs> um, and, and there's one individual as well who like, could absolutely probably have done this, maybe even on his own, like had, had the skills, like the, obviously that, that place is comprised of, um, composed of uh, a lot of uh, amazing people, but like you're gonna bring together a bunch of guys, many of whom are like in their fifties, they stretch out and like, you know, take their medication <laughs> and then like get together and I like after an invade package, I'm like, uh, but anyway, I, I'm gonna get my butt kicked um, for this for sure. This is like not my place to talk, but. No, no, time, I mean, because they're they're like already retired JSOC operators and stuff, correct. you know, they're, and they're, yeah. their job is to, you know, lead a paramilitary effort, uh, not not be uh, operators necessarily. Right. And I mean, for uh, by all means, like the, the, their path, I mean, they're, and then they're, the stuff that they did in Afghanistan and, and the other places yeah, around yeah. the world, um, again, uncommon valor. Um, at, at the time this is, you know, happening, there are, are paramilitary officers in Afghanistan, um, you know, that are at the front lines of uh, combat in lots of um, areas. And, and, you know, despite the three times they've been shot in the leg, you know, they're still, um, you know, kicking down a door and entering a room. Um, so Jesus, some of them weren't supposed to, but, but getting it done. And, and there's no, no shit on them at all. I wouldn't have done it. I would have turned down the opportunity to do it. I still would turn it down right now. I would gladly hide behind uh, the armored Hilux if given the opportunity. So um, don't don't take the wrong thing from me. But it wasn't. It shouldn't have been them, um, in my opinion. And I was on the other side of this when it was like, okay, can we make this work all in time? And this was a secrecy thing, so it wasn't like they weren't being crazy. Like they were like, how many? What's the fewest number of people we can tell about this? Because they're going to bring in the military. It's a much harder right, um, right to keep that secret, right? Even JSOC. Um, and so they ended up keeping JSOC out of it for a long time. Um, I don't think they ended up, I, I have it in my notes somewhere, but like um, I cleared notes for those of you who are paying attention to the level <laughs> of detail that I'm presenting right now. It is pages and pages. Take it up with the PRB. If you think I'm overstepping my bounds here, I, I have a, a bullet point um, amount of information on this, but um, again, it's, it, there's nothing, there's no, nothing about this is going to um, throw off uh, a future operation. Or if you want to debate that with me, you can, you can uh, find me on Twitter. Um <laughs> And uh, yeah, so at this point, it becomes clear that like, you know, this is going to need, we're going to need helicopters. Well, the big thing that came down was like, what happens if it goes wrong? Like, okay, you guys can probably do it, right? Like you get in, you you, you do the battle rattle um, and, and you probably do kill him. Like he ends up dying at this, but How then all of a sudden out? now you've got the Pakistan military coming, right? right. Yeah. Um, and what do you do if that goes south? Because we're not leaving. Obama already said nobody, we're, we're, if we decide to do this, nobody's being left in Pakistan under any circumstance. He's like, I don't care what the repercussions are. And so at that point, they're like, oh God, we need a, you know, a, a 60 person QRF. Um, we need a combat air patrol. Um, we need all the things. And once now, that now it's getting clear, bigger and bigger. Right, right. Um, and of course they didn't institute that until very close to the raid day. So, but right. then they call up uh, Admiral McRaven. They briefed him in. I've heard some good stories about him briefing his senior staff in and them not believing it. Um, or not quite believing it or wondering what happens. I think the, one of the very first briefs that happened to this was down at Bragg, like in a, in a front yard on like a Sunday or something like that. And, uh, McCraven calls over one of his senior staff. He's like, Hey, can you come in? He's like, I really don't want to, I'm mowing the lawn. He's like, I'll come to you. And he goes over there and says, never going to guess. And he's like, Oh my God. He's like, okay, let me put the lawnmower away. Oh, I, I think that, I think that was Tony Thomas. If I recall. Oh, you've, I okay. Did he, did he tell you this? Story? I, I believe, I believe he's told this story publicly before. Okay, good. All right. I'm glad he did. That's exactly who it is. Um, <laughs> so hopefully you didn't dupe me into giving that one up. Cause I, I know that's, um, general Thomas's story, but that, that that's exactly who that I, was. I, I will. I would like to invite him on the show to tell the story himself. Uh, oh, well, I'll, uh, if I didn't just do him a disservice, I'll, I'll reinforce that in an email to him. Okay. Um, now at this point, in time, he's got some great stories that go along with this too, about what they were doing behind the scenes at that time. Sure. They're, they're, they're very funny at this point in time. Had it already been determined that it was going to be seal team six or was there, was there jockeying going on between, between, uh, Delta and seal team six? No, zero. Uh, SEAL Team 6 was the, um, the 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 element that was responsible for Afghanistan at that time. If, if any jockeying, I'm, I would be really surprised to learn if it did. Um, but I don't think there's any question at this point. They were the the, the special mission force um, on tap to do this. They knew the, the environment. Um, they already had all their resources forward. Um, it would have been ludicrous um, to swap it out. Um, despite, did I want to say this? Come on. I mean, I, well, I mean, you know, I, I come from the Army <laughs> years. Like, I, I have a, I have a special place in my heart, um, you know, for for Delta Force sure, and guys at Delta sure. Force, um, and and um, yeah, I, I know operators from um, both sides. I mean, it's like comparing 
you know, Olympic gold medalist sprinters at this point, right? Like, um, uh, and, and, but they have, they already had some amazing successes in operations like this. So it wouldn't have been hard to make that argument. Like maybe we should um, pivot to Delta force, but it would have been, I think it would have been laughed out of the room. It's like, no, and we got to, uh, the assets like, were already force. there. Oh, forward for sure. Right. Yeah. They were right there. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so this was not a big shift. I mean, they brought in a team from outside theater because, you know, this was right the, because of uh, the, the deployment cycle. Um, and this and the secrecy element, right? You needed to be able to. Could, could um, uh, were, were you a uh, part of the? I mean, I know now we're talking about JSOC primarily, but um, allegedly they did their train up, their rehearsals at a you know an undisclosed uh, CIA facility that I won't mention here, just to not yeah. put you on the spot. But um, could could you I've talk about like that? Could could you talk about that uh, that um, kind of train up process at all? Yeah, I mean, um, it's fairly well documented. I, I, I'm definitely going to be speaking out of school to go in too much depth on it because, you know, I I, I, I might have heard about this even third hand. Um, now, I knew some of the, the guys. I can't remember. Um, I don't remember where I put this, but uh, I, I had the chance to know um, one of the now uh, more famous uh, people involved in this um, and that he was my beanbag partner um, out in theater about – seven months um, before, and he was pretty good at beanbags. Um, so it was like cornhole. Shooter. Yeah. 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 Cornhole, yeah. So right. was, I, I got to play, got to play cornhole tournament. And he was um, just coincidentally matched up with me. So uh, that I got, I got a chance to um, meet him before this. And then also he, he was, um, you know, we went down and talked to the teams in advance um, as we were sort of um, gearing up and starting to pass information at a pretty heavy rate. Um, and so we got to go down and spend time with them. And yeah, it was just a lot of, I mean, we didn't, the line people in, in the agency didn't have much interaction um, with the operators once they started to get going. There's mm -hmm. a couple people who did, right? For obvious reasons. Um, but yeah, that didn't, that didn't come up to me. What I, the people that I ended up seeing were, you know, sort of the JSOC elements that ended up posting up at um, CIA um, in the run up to the raid and, and more from the, the planning, the higher level uh, planning side, you know, what they were going to do, contingencies, um, you know, CIA ultimately had um, mission authority for this, and um, JSOC was seconded to the agency for this mission, which is just a cool feature of um, the intelligence community. I, I don't know how many people actually tracked that, but like this was not a military operation, right? It was, was a right. Title 50 CIA operation with JSOC moved over to the CIA for the operation. Right. At because of authorities control. between, like, right? They wanted to be able to potentially have deniability if you needed it, they wanted to run it as a covert. Um, action uh, all the way up until the point where they maybe could would not have to disclose it, um, and so the only way they did that was to, to chalk JSOC over to um, CIA. And so yeah, uh, I, reported I think we uh, we might have skipped over this part. Uh, I'd like to go back to if you can, and and, and maybe you can't. The jacket asked like, uh, what were some of the options on the table? Oh yeah, sorry. So no, I mean, yeah, okay. these have been. Yeah, these have been well worn. So, um, yeah, so there was a uh, the, the paramilitary option um, was on the table for a good long time, actually, uh, because they could, they could actually run out a lot of planning um, with those guys sort of thinking about it, and they wanted to keep it pretty well secret. So that was one um, the, that turned into obviously J four uh, JSOC raid force um, action. But d again, down to the eleventh hour, there was strong consideration being given to a drone strike, um, and then also just um, yeah, a straight up heavy bomber run. Um, and the drone strike was uh, that was a, a pretty well um, debated um, decision, and there were people who went to bed the night before the raid still in favor of the drone strike. Wow! Um, over the raid, Sen senior people, mm -hmm. senior people. Um, and the bombing raid, the bombing raid, you know, um, was ruled out pretty quickly once they determined how many bombs they were going to have to drop to be certain that they got uh, Bin Laden. And then at that point, there were people in the room that were like you can send JSOC and do this and probably none of the innocent people, even you can debate um, who was innocent and not innocent on that compound at that time. But like at this point, no one felt like any of the women and children needed to die in this. Like there, that was not a debate, right? In fact, it was Obama, I think, who ultimately said, if we can do this and demonstrate the, the power of America to go in and get this done, not shoot any women and children, not kill any women and children in this and get the guy we're going after, he wanted to be able to show the world um, that that was the class act that was happening. So the bombing raid was ruled out relatively quickly. Mm -hmm. It was kept there as sort of a, a thought exercise, but nobody raised their hand for that. The drone strike was, I mean, it, it, you know, um, I mean, the CIA doesn't conduct drone strikes. So I would, that's definitely not um, something that would ever happen um, inside a, a secret organization like that. But right. if they did, right. um, if they ever had conducted drone strikes, hypothetically, um, they would have been extremely good at it. 
Um, and it was a, a tool that would, would have been easy to roll out um, in this situation. But then you don't know it's Bin Laden. Right. Um, and what do you do then? Right. Um, How do you do the and, and you re- Right. Yeah. Yeah. You want this. The, 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 the United States of America deserves to know that, you know, uh, public enemy number one, um, you know, reached, reached justice, you know, it was dealt justice. Um, and you can't, it, it just didn't sit well with the president. It didn't sit well with us. I was, I was, nobody was asking me, I didn't get a vote. They, right. didn't, they didn't count my hand in the vote, but like I was, I was raid force, um, from the second it became an option until, um, uh, the day of, and, and I didn't change all that. And ultimately it came down to, um, what's the confidence level that it has been long because now you're sending the raid force in and, and this is where the politics become. And if you did do a, a drone strike and it's Saudi here, well, not great, but not, not super painful. The bombing also not great, but wouldn't have been extraordinarily painful. I mean, depending on exactly how many bombs they dropped and if they'd killed innocent Pakistanis or hit a, a military convoy driving by by accident or something like that, but that, that wasn't a feature. Um, but the raid force, that's just, you can just see um, the problem there. And so, um, yeah, one of the, this is a feature of the leadership that I tell uh, when I tell this story, you know, they looked around and said, does anybody, you know, who who feels like this is just, this has been Laden? And one of the leaders in this chain, um, who was a senior leader to us, but like in the government was not a senior leader, um, raised his hand and said, yeah, it's been Laden. It's been Laden. Um, and then came out of that meeting and told the rest of us that that's what he said. And we're like, no, we don't know. Nobody knows that. <laughs> and he's like, look, they needed somebody to say it. Um, they needed somebody to say it with like conviction. Right. Um, and frankly, that's, I'm, that's my job. Um, um, it couldn't have been said higher up. Like it, it just wouldn't happen and nobody could have said it lower. Um, so this landed on me. Um, and I was like, wow. And there's still people to this day that disagree with that decision, even though he, he ended up being right. They were like, right. no, he shouldn't have said that. We didn't have the uh, intelligence to support that. Um, and I, I was, I watched that and I've taken that. That's in my back pocket now when I give leadership. The, the, the fear is that um, becomes another WMDs in Iraq kind of deal, right? Oh, you're it, done. Yeah, yeah, you're done. You go in. Yeah, it, queers exactly. and, yeah. Yep. Everybody remembers that. Now, you know, does he, do you actually in, uh, incur a repercussion from that? Um, saying that and then it ends up not being him. Does anybody remember who, who was the, you know, the, the senior person in CI, but not like the director of CI that said that probably not, but the rest of us do. Yeah. Um, and that, that's not something you want as a, as a person who, you know, um, is there, there, your entire, um, uh, you know, um, personal story is, is it, it, wound it's a, up. It's in, a zero right or hero moment for real. Right. Oh yeah. <laughs> who, who, trust, who trusts your decisions after that? If you're the guy that made that call and it turns out not to be right. And, and you made the call, Afterwards, they would have been like, well, what, how, upon what information did you make that call? And you say, no, it was my, uh, yeah. just, it was a gut call. Yeah. I felt <laughs> yeah. like it needed to be said. Nobody yeah, else yeah. said no, That doesn't play the same way right. uh, if it goes the other way. Um, right. But, but was, it was clearly the right way to go. Right. Um, they needed that. Uh, the president needed that. Um, and and it, it was the right call. Uh, but I saw that. You know, so I, I we're going home Friday. Um, but I can back up too because I was in the very last um, planning meeting wasn't even a planning meeting at this point because the green light had already been given. So the Friday meeting with Panetta, um, yeah, I'll, I'll go from here since uh, chronology is y'all's, um, sure. one of your sticks. But uh, uh, so <laughs> I'm as a as the EA at this point, the executive at this point, like I have a bunch of like super small d- duties. Like anybody who's watching this right now, I'm like, is he putting himself in a leadership role? What's he doing? No, absolutely not. A towel boy. Um, uh, you know, bench player, whatever it was. Like I was, you know, moving binders around. Yeah, you know, I, I make a joke that like you, lots of people remember these binders that were getting passed around at that point because it was like the binders that were getting passed up to people who were getting read in. And it was like the story from, you know, start to finish in this little binder. And they, they were kind of well-known at that point. I'm like, hey, do you remember that binder that you got? Uh, and they're like, yeah, I remember that binder. I'm like, that was mine. Um, I did that. I cop- I printed out those sheets. I punched the three hole punches in them. I put them in those binders and I put the cover sheet in and then we delivered them around in boxes, all me. Um, and of course the whole story's in there. So I, I, this last day comes up and like, I am literally, I think going to be responsible for putting the placards on the chairs. Cause it's like a fight, like who's going to sit where in the director's conference room. Cause it's not set up like a, a talk, right? It's just the conference room. And that's where they're going to run it out of the director's conference room. So we're going to like put the placards up there and who's going to sit where. And we're like figuring out like who, you know, who gets to sit closest to the director, all this right. stuff. Um, and we're going to have a meeting um, with the chief of staff of the agency at that point, who is um, Jeremy Bash. 
And that meeting is like, it's unclear when that's going to happen. It's like 10 o'clock or one o'clock. I remember what it was. And then at the same time, another meeting has come together and it's this last meeting with the director of the senior staff. Um, and the director is going to go downtown and have this last meeting with the president, you know? Um, and this is in the run up to the, um, um, oh my God, the, the event every year that the, the president often goes to the um, president Trump thing go to. Uh, the correspondence the, dinner. Correct. Yeah. The correspondence dinner on Saturday. Yeah. Thank you. So he's gearing up. President Obama's gearing up for the correspondence dinner and then also consuming this last briefing. And so I'm going up and I'm with some other um, of the senior leaders and they're going up to have this meeting. I'm going up to do the placards meeting. We get up there. We're walking down the seventh floor. I've been up there a bunch of times at this point, but like I'm always going through like the main door with the seal and like there's protocol and all that stuff. We don't hit that door. We hit like some unmarked door to the right that these guys are like totally um experienced with now and i'm just sort of following them and like now we're back in the innards of like the senior staff rooms right there and i don't know where we are so i'm just following them following them, following them. we go through another door and it's the side door to the director's office like the inner director's office i've never been through this side door uh, and i follow them blindly through it and the door closes behind me and the meeting's already in progress panetta at the head deputy director at the other end and the senior staff around the table and a bunch of people on his couch and i'm like oh, I am not supposed to be in this meeting. <laughs> I quickly run through the calculations. Like I'm the youngest person in there by a lot, like by a lot. Um, and I'm like, all right, I'm not going to risk this one. This is to be super embarrassing. So I turn around and I go back and the deputy chief of staff is standing at the door and she's like, Oh yeah. It's a compartmented, yeah, like, you know, classified operation. Like once you're she, in, you're not coming out. This, yeah, well, her thing is protocol. We're not opening the door again. Like right. that's a disruption in here. It's rude already that your bosses, um, you know, were kind of late for this. Um, and she's like, take a seat. And I was like, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I run over, I got a section of you a like couch. I whip out my notebook. A, you jump up and do a heel click. Yeah, yeah exactly. Right. Yeah. And I, I get in there and, and then, and then this is like the senior staff, like breaking down, you know, okay, here's what we're gonna tell the president. Like the first time I've ever seen this. Right. And I'm like diligently pretending to take notes. So like I look around and at one point the deputy director, Mike Morrell at this point, he looks, he's got a line of sight to me on the couch. Um, and this is the same people who've been in this room for like months now. Like nothing changes about these people. And he's like, and he leans over to the director of CTC who's sitting to his left and says loud enough that the whole room could say, who is that guy? Uh, and I'm like, this is, this is going to be really bad. And like, I I know the deputy, I know the director of CTC at this point somewhat well, but like he never seems to recognize. Like I, I'm always like, how does he never recognize me? And so like when I'm like, when he says, who is that guy to him? I'm like, oh, geez. He turns around and he's like, oh, that's Aaron. Uh, he's good. Uh, and I was like, oh, he does know who I am. <laughs> um, and then they actually, I got a job, I got a little job um, out of it too. They needed like a, a phone call into theater real quick. And like, um, they wanted it fast before like Panetta was going to go downtown. So um, yeah, the, the director of CTC leads over and goes, Aaron, go get so-and-so on the phone right away and ask them blah, blah, blah um, for the director leave. So anyway, I did that. Um, the, 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 a great Panetta story came out of this too, where like, they're talking about all of these high level things. I mean, like hugely consequential things like earth, earth moving things. And, um, Panetta says, uh, I have a question. Everybody's like, Oh God. Okay, here we go. Um, is it, do we think it's, is it okay if I go to church on Sunday, uh, before this, or do I need to come straight in, uh, on Sunday and everybody, you know, like this, this tension releases in the room and everybody laughs. And I think it was maybe Jeremy or somebody said like, Sir, if you wish to bring your congregation to the CIA on Sunday, um, you can probably go ahead and do the service here uh, in the senior staff room. Like, these are the types of things you worried about. Like, am I going to throw off um, the day's events, the planning steps if I, like, you know, go to because, um, like, Sunday did, service? Didn't Obama go to the correspondence center just to make everything look normal? Because well, he, he was clear. But I mean, like, you know, Panetta could skip. Like, nobody's following uh, Panetta's every movement. So, like, he was just worried about his team. He's like, where where do I need to be? Mm -hmm. And I don't want to do a thing that I would normally do if that's going to disrupt that. But you're right. Yeah, I know Obama couldn't skip that, right? That would have been immediately um, uh, heightened uh, situation. It was That was unheard of to skip it at that point, right? right. And so, yeah, no, no, he couldn't. That was an interesting feature of that. And we, that that level obviously did not come down to us. Like, I'm, I, I'm fairly certain, like, I learned about the discussion surrounding that um, after the fact. I mean, it was clear to us why he was doing it at the time. But that they had such a heavy discussion on that was I only learned about um, after the fact. Um, and so anyway, just to round out that that sort of day, because that was uh, obviously a super consequential day, I go by this boss's desk again. Um, we're closing out for the day. It's, it's late. Um, and uh, I say, so what are you, you going to go do, chief? And he's like, I'm going to go home. I'm going to make a huge plate of spaghetti. I'm going to fill up a glass of wine all the way to the top. I'm going to drink it. 
I'm a pretty god that Bin Laden's in that cut. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. okay. Uh, anyway, and the rest of it, I think, is pretty well known. Like you know, it's that that Sunday is that story has been told um, over and over again, and 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 you know, we were no different. And you know, sitting there and and you know, consuming it all as it sort of rolled out. Uh, and uh, the entire department at that point um, was in there. So that my my only leadership story that I had from that was I made the case to read in um, the entire department that Friday. Um, I think it was Friday afternoon. It might have been Thursday um, because I was like, you can't not read these folks in like this is not where this is leaking from at this point like some people in congress know like it's it's going right. out in binders and like you can't let 200 people that have been working in this department with all of their lives work or whatever it was at that point um and let them go home on a friday only to learn that the bin laden raid is on a sunday and not tell them um, right and so you know and that was that was the role of like an executive assistant in a, in a department like that. You're thinking the bosses are all thinking about this high level thing, and, and you know I can zoom in there and be like, hey, let's let's tell the team, um, and and we can have everybody come in. I'll tell you this point. That's not going to be the deciding factor on this. And to their credit, they did it. Um, they so I, I I have always had this uh, question about you brought up earlier.